Good evening, everyone. This is the um, May regular meeting of the Community Development Commission. And um, we have an agenda for the meeting this evening. And we'll start with call to order. Um, OK. Then. Pardon? Yes. Meeting will now come to order. <laughs> okay. Okay. And next we'll have uh, roll call. Okay. Um, Fred Cobb. Here. Janice Bankston. Brian Cunningham. Chris Diana. Here. Ann Hines Silvis. Here. Lauren Carplus. Here. Jerry Moreland. We have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we'll have a um, uh, review of the minutes, after which we will, I'll entertain a motion for approval or, or corrections. So we'll take a couple of minutes to do that. Okay, has everyone finished uh, reviewing the minutes? If so, I'll entertain a motion for approval or corrections. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Okay, there's been a motion to approve the minutes as written. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes as written. Uh, any um, questions, comments? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no? Ayes have it. Uh, the minutes stand approved as written. Okay. Next, uh, we have petitions and communications. I believe that refers to written written uh, correspondence. None of that. Okay. Audience participation. We have no audience. Next, we have. Uh, <laughs> next, we'll go to staff report. Okay. Um, in your packet was the staff briefing um, showing ac activities and accomplishments and updates since April 26th. Um, we, uh, from HUD, we did receive our response regarding our submission of additional in items for uh, consideration with regard to the monitoring. And uh, one finding was corrected. We still have a couple more that we need to deal with, but uh, we believe that we will get those. Completed, the HUD did say when we first monitored that um, because of the new regulations and all policies and procedures that mm -hmm. it could take, you know, at least a year or longer mm -hmm. to, you know, get 
everything uh, according to the final rule. So, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we expect to, uh, this hopefully will be the final submission once we complete the final item. So, um, and then you can see um, all the different things that uh, myself, that uh, Matt coordinator and rehab coordinator, um, housing rehab um, have done as far as projects, um, the different programs, what we're um, working on. Um, point out the um, consolidated social service funding um, that is going council uh, will be making um, decisions in June along with the budget mm -hmm. um, and then we'll be bringing probably agreements back so um, and then also the different meetings that we attend so um, that's it if you have any questions please let me know can I just ask for um, clarification under CDBG? Um, can you just explain a little more detail both those points, the working on CSSF process with the CD quarter and working with um, TH clients on goals? Just what were those? Sure. Um, particularly under uh, a community development block grant, we have a lot of different programs. One, um, what we call is our public service, which is made up of three different uh, programs under that. Um, our consolidated social service funding in which we put a small portion of the uh, community development block grant funds into with the general city general fund in Cunningham Township um, and then um, secondly is our transitional housing program um, and then third is our neighborhood cleanup those are all considered public service so basically what that was saying was just the process of the applications um, getting um, um, let's see the applications um, the, scoring materials, the scoring materials yes the scoring materials um, working with council so that's that's the process um, and that actually is done uh, the majority of it but um, I was helping him with whatever, whatever he needed regarding the process and then um, transitional housing clients um, I am the one that is working with, we have two families, so I am working with those families um, on goals and helping them to become self-sufficient. So that's what that's about. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? If not, uh, thank you very much. And uh, we have old business, uh, nothing under old business. So we'll go to new business. Under new business, we have um, the um, agreements involving <clears throat> Highland Green LLC and also a resolution amending an Urbana Home Consortium tenant based rental assistance program agreement. So, first, we'll start with the, um, uh, the agreement between Urbana Home Consortium and Highland Green LLC. Would you like to explain that? Yeah, I'll let Matt, um, since he's the one who did the memos and I'm about to lose my voice, Matt will be <laughs> doing oh, okay. that and I'll help with any questions. Mm -hmm. So the, the two, the first resolution is for the, the home consortium and that's transferring home funds to Highland Green LLC, <coughs> which is the development consortium that's um, trying to build the, um, what was known as the Kerr Avenue development, what is now known as Highland Green. And that one really goes, that resolution really goes hand in hand with the second one, um, which conveys community development mm -hmm. black grant funds. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just for purposes of logistics, it's, it's two separate agreements, mm -hmm. um, one between the home consortium and the developer and one between the city um, and the developer. The city one being uh, conveying commu community development black grant funds and the other one for the home funds. Mm -hmm. So the, the two combined um, total of uh, $500,000 being given to the developer um, for various uses. Uh, I think it's $291,000 um, in terms of home and the remainder about $200,000 um, would be CDBG. And this was done really to, to fill um, the gaps, the financing gaps that the developer has for this project. Most of the funding is provided by the low-income housing tax credits and the other gap financing, 
but their pro forma is awfully tight and this funding would really be crucial to getting them over the hump and getting them um, allowing them to produce a, a development that would really help to meet the city's goals that we've set out for um, for this mm -hmm. development for the past several years so this is it's a, mm -hmm. a very important contribution that the cities and home consortium are able to make um, <coughs> The home funding would actually fund specific units at the development. Um, right now, based on the per unit maximum subsidies, um, it would be, we're thinking two units um, that would be then subject to home rent restrictions, a 20 year affordability period, and the other restrictions that come along with the, um, the home program. Uh, the CDBG funding is only allowed to be used for infrastructure developments. It can't be used for new construction of housing units. Um, but right now, the site plans entail <coughs> uh, construction of new roads, mm -hmm. um, new sewage uh, facilities, pipes. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the developers estimated almost a million dollars worth of infrastructure work that CDBG would be eligible to help on. Um, so there's certainly uh, work that can be done. As I mentioned before, this is uh, this project is something that the, has been voiced through many city documents. Um, council has repeated uh, its support of uh, this project. Um, it's in both the current and the previous uh, City of Urbana Home Consortium Consolidated Plans. Um, there is a, a city council and mayor goal that uh, touches on this pretty specifically. Um, the 2005 Urbana Comprehensive Plan, although it's more of a, a land use document, also um, many of the goals stated in that, this development would help to further those as well. Mm -hmm. And a, a very important um, side benefit of uh, the home funds being contributed to this project is that that's a it's a very large component of our um, home commitment meeting our home commitment deadline. Um, it's about five hundred thousand dollars in home funds that the the consortium as a whole, us Champagne and the county, need to be able to make, um, and we have a plan in place for being able to commit the total amount that needs to be committed by the deadline. Uh, but this is certainly a critical component of that, is being able to commit these home funds to Highland Green. Uh, and programmatically, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this certainly is in keeping with many of the guiding documents uh, of the City of Urbana and the Home Consortium. And staff recommends that the Community Development Commission forward these resolutions, uh, advancing the funds to the developer, to the City Council with recommendation for approval. Are there any questions? I know there's a lot of information. We've got a question. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, there's an agreement to provide 500,000 um, total, but it says that uh, the request was for 450,000. Mm -hmm. So that's an extra 50,000 that's being put in there and uh, being given to them to work with. Um, and it says also that there was some um, most recent pro forma reveal an unmet need and insufficient contingency. I was wondering what the unmet need is. Do you know? It's really that their their sources right now, the the funding that they have, they don't really have much. Their, their needs are being met, but they don't have much to fall back on if contingency. any of contingencies, if any of the costs increase, if any of the estimates were a little bit off. Um, there's really not that much for them to fall back on if that were the case. Um, so we thought that it was appropriate to provide a little bit more. We have the funding, and we thought it would be appropriate to provide a little bit more. Cushion. Um, yeah, a cushion, a <laughs> uh, financial cushion for them um, just in case, yeah, yeah their costs mm -hmm. increase. Okay. Um. Go ahead. Yeah. I, just have a, I know this started off as the Kerr Avenue Development Plan and now it's the highly Green. What is the time frame of this getting, because I remember seeing years ago that they was going to start this and 
mm-hmm. nothing happened. Now they're changed the name and. Were, uh, part of the the restrictions of using home funds is that construction needs to begin within 12 months. So us being able to commit home funds conveys a, a commit or a confidence that they will begin construction within 12 months. They're hoping to close on all of their financing relatively soon, um, and after that. Um, I would estimate it would be nine to 12 months that they would begin construction. Um, so this is, I understand, yeah, it, it's, it's been a long time coming and there have been a lot of, it's started and stopped, um, but this, we really are um, about as close as we've ever been with this. Part of the length of time also is um, in that the developer was applying to Illinois Housing Development Authority for low-income housing tax credits. And that took a while for Ida to free up those um, because developers, they really need those um, tax credits in order to make the uh, development more affordable for them to build. And that just took a while um, because Ida said that there were a lot of developments that were occurring in the community and those have pretty much been built. So now um, they were able to get those successfully and that's why we're moving quickly forward. You have a question? What's there now? (coughs) It's a vacant lot. There are no structures there now. And it it backs up up on Crystal Lake. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Crystal Lake on the west, Bar Avenue to the south, yeah. Cunningham Motors um, yeah. to the east. So it's actually probably more like Caddy Corner. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it will move. It will go back so that it will be kind of adjacent to it. I think there is a yeah. plan, a picture of the plan. Yeah, I saw that, and it said that the management office will be in Crystal Lake townhomes area. So yes, yes. it must be pretty close. Yes. Anything, Chris? Um, <coughs> yeah, d- well, briefly, just following up on, on what Fred was asking, just to be sure I understand. So the unmet need was the lack of sufficient contingency funds? Yes. Okay, so they're one in, mm-hmm. one in the same then? Yes. Okay. All yeah. right. Then I guess my only question was with regard to, well, we've got about roughly 40% of this is CDBG and 60% home. Um, depending upon how this project rolls out, what you were using as the identification of use for CDBG funds with the physical infrastructure development, is all of that compliant with the normal use? I mean, normally when we're talking infrastructure development, we aren't talking physical infrastructure with CDBG. We're talking uh, organizational development. Actually, do they fall under the same category? It where does. It's interchangeable? Actually, we have as part of our um, um, annual action plan, we put city infrastructure. So we we have worked with public works right. and doing streets mm-hmm. and sidewalks and gutters, right. um, sewers. So yes, that is definitely eligible activities with CDBG. Then how are we going to kind of track starting a development as a sloppy business? And so that money should be used for infrastructure. The home funds really shouldn't be, in a sense. They could be, but they're, they're not specifically tagged for that. So right. as they start rolling into this project, how are we going to determine that these funds are actually being allocated to the purposes they're supposed to be under our charter? As the, the agreements right now for the CDBG funds, <clears throat> that one in particular, um, is being is, is receiving legal review, so they're really both um, living documents right now. We're making adjustments to them just to make sure that you know they're legally sufficient, um, things of that nature, and that's certainly something that we could include in there. Is you know we can talk with the developer, see what specifically needs to be done, um, and then tag certain. Uh, infrastructure activities in that agreement and tie um, tie it to that. Right. That's something that could be done. Yeah, because I guess kind of what right. I see, it's more the home funds mm-hmm. than the CDBG. And we because definitely... there's going to be a lot more than $200,000 worth of infrastructure right. that oh, yeah. gets done first right. before they ever get to the units. Right, yeah. And we definitely... Um, 
monitor. I mean, that's right. what we did with Crystal View was, you know, we were on site, um, we meetings with the developers, you know, making sure that mm -hmm. um, whatever, you know, the money was used for the purpose, you know. Right. So we will definitely, you know, make sure. Yeah, that would be mm -hmm. my only concern yeah. is that, and certainly I don't anticipate that mm -hmm. there or wish it on a project, but right. there, are, there are many projects mm -hmm. that stall out somewhere with a lot of semi-developed infrastructure right. and mm -hmm. then they're out of funds. Mm -hmm. If that was the case in this particular circumstance, then obviously those home funds would have also been expended, mm -hmm. but not for the two units we're talking about. They would be uh, half a street somewhere. Right. And yeah, uh, yeah, we'll definitely <clears throat> um, be on top and make sure that, um, yeah, that's what we did with Crystal View and, you know, yeah. anything else that we've put money in that we make that's sure. That's what I was thinking Yeah, we go on to, site. Yeah. We even have to make sure, you know, like Section 3 and Davis-Bacon and, and, and all that. So we will definitely be, you know, working with the developers and the, the LLC and making sure that um, the funds get used for what they're supposed to. Good. Mm. And are they coming along well with the rest of their funding at this point? Or? Um, I believe the um, the rest of their funding, they have commitments for it. Right. Um, they have commitments for the uh, the tax credits. That's obviously the, the biggest por portion. Um, yeah, I think the, the other parts are also committed. But, yeah, I was actually just going to get in touch with the developer about that um, tomorrow and try to straighten that out. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay, <clears throat> just clarify a little bit more. The total amount that they're going to require is that the seven million? Seven point six. That's their mm -hmm. current estimate. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I had a question about the fiscal impact of giving them the, these funds. It says there will be no fiscal in, impact on the city general funds. I brought this up before. We're a community development commission and we don't deal with city funds, <laughs> yeah. what impact does it have on community development uh, activity at Actually, um, it is, it's a, it's a unique situation in that um, we have, this is like carryover money, basically. It's money that mm -hmm. um, from 13, 14 and fiscal year 14, 15. Mm -hmm. um, we have this, um, when we, we get program income, Mm -hmm. Per the IDIS and HUD and the, all that, you have to use that first. And so when you put that program income into a project, then that frees up entitlement. And mm -hmm. so um, Don, our financial person, and Matt did a scouring of all of our, you know, the last mm -hmm. several years and found that we had these funds that we mm -hmm. had not um, spent because we had used program income instead. So mm -hmm. it will not affect any, um, like, this year 15, 16 funds or even next year's funds, 16, or 17, for projects. This is mm -hmm. money that um, we need to spend, and it's um, not affecting any of our programs. It's like extra money. Pretty much, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. That answers me. Any other questions? Is this yeah. development going to look like um, Crystal Lake or any of the other redevelopments that we've seen around? I mean, I s I've seen the schematic where some are one story, some are two story, different sizes, et cetera. But what are they going to look like? Are they going to look like Crystal Lake or? Because it's it's the same developer as Crystal View townhomes. Mm -hmm. um, it, Presumably, it's going to have a very similar look um, to those units, but obviously those are attached townhomes. These are going to be um, entirely single-family and duplex units. Oh. Um, so it's going to be much smaller, a little bit more spread out, um, looking more like a, a single-family mm -hmm. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, but it will all be under one ownership. It will be rental. Um, so a lot of the, the physical characteristics of the units themselves are still being determined. Um, it, the, the development needs to undergo a planned unit development, PUD um, analysis, and that's going to really play a role in what they even can do uh, in terms of creating the units and designing them. So that's yet to be determined. But they have a pretty good idea, and that's what they're thinking. And I think they use the same architect for all of their developments, mm -hmm. so they have somewhat of a similar look. 
Okay, there was also a reference uh, to a public me uh, hearing, I think June 9th, in there. Um, who's going to be invited to that? That's the plan commission on June 9th, and that was the planned unit development that I had mentioned. Um, and that's, uh, it'll, it'll be um, basically a, a recommendation, or the plan, plan commission is a, an advisory body, a lot mm -hmm. like the Community Development mm -hmm. Commission, um, and it's open to the public. Um, anyone can attend. And, um, so they will be the ones soliciting participation? Um, commission or well it that the planning staff would actually be um, I, I'm working with them to uh, send out a mailing uh, I think it's uh, people within 250 feet of the the subject oh. property mm -hmm. will receive a mailing there will be signs put out on the property mm -hmm. stating that um, this property the mm -hmm. Highland Green property will be the subject of a planned unit development the meeting is at this date and time at this location mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. um, so the, the public will be notified. Pretty soon? Pretty <laughs> so, uh, well, probably tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right. we're, so this project is kind of in conjunction with our division and with the planning division, kind mm -hmm. of simultaneously doing things regarding this, this project. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I could again, Fred, mm -hmm. just maybe going back to the same question I asked before but for a different reason I wasn't really aware that they were still kind of at the fledgling end of the PUD on this now with that needing to be completed and we're still talking about home funds being expended within 12 months and the home funds are going to have to be part of the actual structures not the infrastructure mm -hmm. you still see all that happening in 12 months well the the timeline for the home funds they just need to begin construction within 12 months Is that that's all? their bench but don't it, they need to begin construction of the part that applies to the home funds i don't believe so okay. i think it's mm. i i'm pretty confident and we'll double check on this to be sure i mean um, good if they don't have to uh, yeah not so good if but they that, do. that was yeah. always my understanding of the yeah. regulations was that it, they just need to begin construction on the development on the development okay. and if that's mm -hmm. the infrastructure or what have you i don't think it makes yeah, a difference. that i can see them hitting i would have a little concern about them actually getting the, the actual structures. units yeah, yeah yeah i don't see that happening in 12 months no okay. we'll double check yeah okay okay any other questions comments if not, um, we need to go ahead and to, um, I'll entertain a motion uh, to recommend this to the city council. Um, I'll recommend, well, I'll entertain a motion. Do, does anyone have a mo motion or want to make the motion to approve this activity? I'll make a motion that we approve it. Uh, sending <clears throat> this to the city council. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, these resolutions and agree these uh, agreements uh, involving Highland Green LLC. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Ayes have it, and the motion carries. Motion carries. Okay, we have one more item under uh, new business, and that is a resolution amending the Urbana Home Consortium Tenant-Based Rental Assistance Program Agreement. Someone would like to explain that? Yes. Um, so that is, uh, there was a, an agreement signed with um, the organization Community Elements mm -hmm. um, several years ago, and uh, it dedicated um, home funds from fiscal year 12 13. Mm -hmm. And for one reason or another, community elements, um, their expenditure of those tenant based rental assistance funds has slowed down um, over the past few months. And the agreement actually expires on June 30th. And because of that, and because of the, the continued need for tenant based rental assistance, um, we've mm -hmm. communicated with community elements and we would like to. Um, it is within home regulations. There's a four-year expenditure period, and this agreement was signed in 2013, so we would like to extend that for mm -hmm. one more year um, mm -hmm. to make the expiration of the agreement 
um, uh, June 30th of 2017. Um, to give them a little bit more time, mm-hmm. um, there is a, they do have another agreement um, following this one that uh, I believe it's another 32,000, which would have the same um, deadline for expiration. Mm-hmm. So we would certainly work with them on um, trying to address some of the issues of expending those funds and getting them out the door and helping the people who need that assistance. Um, but in the short term, uh, we think it best to extend this agreement for a little bit longer to give them another year um, so that the funds uh, don't get taken away from their program which does the, their program certainly is in line with um, some of the goals that we've set out for the the consolidated plan as well so this mm-hmm. is certainly a, a worthy activity um, so we do recommend that the CDC uh, forward this resolution um, to the City Council with a recommendation of approval um, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Can I ask um, why they're having, I, just if you're in contact yeah. with them, why they're having trouble? Like, are, are there people not needing yeah. it, or is it too bureaucratic? Like, what's the issue that they're not getting the funding out there? Um, I th- I'm thinking um, that um, they have new staff on board, and so they not, may not be um, fully aware of this and maybe other programs. And so um, we're actually going to be doing a monitoring of all of our subrecipients and, um, and in contact with them to um, let them know that um, about the program and make sure that they let all of their staff know um, in order to do this. Yeah, and we'll, we'll certainly um, be in touch with them, yeah, specifically about the TBRA, and the monitoring will help us to sort of get an in-depth look at their organization and their structure, um, and then we can also make recommendations to them about what they can do to um, expend the funds a little bit more quickly and bring on more clients. Mm-hmm. Okay, any uh, other I, questions? I guess I would recommend that rather strongly there's mm-hmm. certainly no shortage of uh, rental assistance required in the community and I would say that I, I mean it's fine what we're doing here but the purpose of this is the purpose of those funds initially were not to be sure that they're expended so they don't have to go back it was to expend them as needed and obviously there's more need there and it isn't really being met so mm-hmm. I, I I would be happier if they had run out of funds earlier and were asking for more than that it was forgotten in a drawer in the back room kind of a thing. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Good for you. Go see what they're doing. (laughs) 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 Any other questions? If not, uh, I'll entertain a motion uh, pertaining to the extension of this uh, tenant-based assistance program agreement. I still move. Okay, we have a motion um, to forward the resolution amending an Urbana Home Consortium tenant-based rental assistance program agreement to the Urbana City Council with a recommendation for approval. Is there a second? We have a second. Any questions, comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, no? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Okay. Um, That exhausts our new business agenda. Do any of the commissioners here have anything else you'd like to bring up at this point before closing the meeting? If not, thank you for your participation, and the meeting is adjourned.